Thanks to KiwiCo for helping support this episode. Hey crazies, we like to think the earth has a lot of texture. It's got tall mountains, it's got low valleys, some of it is hard rock, some of it is soft grass. Quite a lot of it is covered in water. But if it could fit in your hand, what would it feel like against your skin? Whenever I bring up the earth as a sphere, I inevitably get a certain kind of comment. No, not that kind. I have comment filters for those. I'm talking about the pedantic ones. The, the earth, earth is, is actually, actually an oblate spheroid. Or if they're a little more elite, the, the earth, earth is, is actually, actually a geoid. geoid. Technically speaking, they're both kind of right, but not really. For the Earth, this one is probably the largest deviation from a perfect sphere. It's bigger at the equator than between the poles. The rotation flattens it out, creating something we call an equatorial bulge. Get your mind out of the gutter. The difference isn't actually this big though. I've exaggerated it for clarity. Seriously, mind out of the gutter. The equatorial diameter is only 26 miles bigger than the polar diameter. That's about 43 kilometers for all the metric people out there. Which might seem like a lot, but the entire Earth is about 8,000 miles in diameter. The oblateness is only 0.3%. And like I said, that's the largest deviation from a perfect sphere. 0.3%. It doesn't have much impact on texture, but it does give us a decent upper bound. Something we've known for a long time is that gravity varies from place to place because the Earth doesn't have a perfectly uniform density. You might have even seen images like this. Sorry to burst your bubble, but that's also exaggerated. All you've got to do is take one look at the scale. The deviations are at most around 360 feet or 110 meters. That's 100 times smaller than mountains and trenches. The geoid actually looks like this. It's basically just a sphere. Human structures have a bigger impact on the Earth's texture than this. The geoid effect may be too small to worry about, but there are plenty of larger features. Mountains are tall and ocean trenches are deep. Let's try to get some perspective on how big these things are. Here are the Rocky Mountains in Colorado. Honestly, this footage isn't doing it justice. They're huge. If you've never seen them before, you should. It's, it's a humbling experience. You don't even have to be good at hiking. I drove to this overlook. It's right off the road. America. What were you doing all the way up there in dress clothes? Oh, oh, we, we were getting five year anniversary photos this past summer. This one's my favorite. Awkward M sister took the pictures and, wait, where was I? Right, mountains. They seem tall to us because we tend to use ourselves as a reference, but that reference isn't gonna serve us very well today. This mountain has an elevation of 12,000 feet. That's 2.3 miles or 3.7 kilometers. But that's only 0.03% of the diameter of the Earth. That's one-tenth of the Earth's oblateness. It's pretty tiny. To be fair though, there are higher mountains. The highest in North America is easily Denali in Alaska at 20,300 feet or 3.8 miles. But that's only 0.05% of the diameter of the Earth. Mount Everest has the highest elevation in the world, 29,000 feet or 5.5 miles. But that's only 0.07% of the diameter of the Earth. Of course, these numbers probably aren't giving you much perspective. A scale model should help. No, this one won't work. The scale is 159 million to one, which is a bit too small for our needs. We'll come back to it later. When I was first planning this video, I thought about doing a one-to-one -one scale. Unfortunately, that would have put the center of the earth in the Pacific Ocean. And I can't exactly send Adventure Clone out on a boat for 15 seconds of footage. Then I thought maybe a two-to-one scale could work. I even sent Adventure Clone out to Hayes, Kansas to film a segment about the core mantle boundary. It put the scaled center of the Earth right smack in the middle of San Diego, which could have been the perfect opportunity to collab with my friend Diana. You probably know her as Physics Girl. Speaking of which, I should probably call her and catch up. Anyway, something being fun to watch doesn't necessarily mean it has educational value. A two to one scale Earth isn't actually helpful for anyone's perspective. It's just too big. 
What we need is a scale large enough that the mountains are obvious, but small enough that the Earth isn't completely impractical. How about a million to one? That's right around the scale you'd find on a typical US state map. Believe it or not, this is all we had for navigation when I was a kid. The horror. Anyway, let's go with Colorado. At a scale of a million to one, every inch on this map is a million inches, or 15.8 miles in the real state of Colorado. Or thanks to the metric system, one scale millimeter equals one real kilometer. Gotta love that metric system. So how tall are the mountains on that scale? Visible, but still pretty small. This Colorado mountain had an elevation of 12,000 feet, or 2.3 miles. In metric, that's 3.7 kilometers. At a million to one scale, that's 3.7 millimeters. That mountain looks like this. I mean, look at this thing. It's adorable. You're so cute, yes you are, the little baby mountain. <laughs> Remember Denali, the highest mountain in North America? Here it is at 6.2 millimeters. Mount Everest, the highest mountain in the world? This is it at 8.8 .8 millimeters. That's it. That's as far from sea level as you can get without flying. Speaking of flying, th th scaling the atmosphere is gonna be trickier. The density of the atmosphere drops gradually as you go up in altitude. About two thirds of it is below the peak of Mount Everest, but the other one third goes up quite a ways. The drop off is so gradual that there really isn't a clear edge. But when has ambiguity ever stopped humans from making categories, am I right? The international definition for the edge of space is 100 kilometers up. On this scale, that puts it at 100 millimeters. That's way up here. The peaks of these mountains are nowhere near what anyone would consider outer space. So the atmosphere dwarfs the mountains, but the entire Earth dwarfs the atmosphere. On our map scale, the center of the Earth is about 21 feet or 6.4 meters down, which I can't really show indoors. It's time to go outside. Here's our same Colorado map at a million to one scale. The center of the Earth would be 21 feet or 6.4 meters below that. The other side of the Earth is twice that distance away. My, my point is the Earth is big. The entire atmosphere is a thin film clinging to the surface of a giant space rock. And our highest mountains are only a 10th of the height of that atmosphere. The Earth is actually quite smooth. The real question is, how smooth exactly? Would it feel smooth if you were holding the Earth in your cosmic hand? My instincts say yes, perfectly smooth, but let's check anyway. What actually matters for the texture of the Earth is the height of a mountain compared to the surrounding mountains. Most mountains don't have the ocean right next to them. They have other mountains next to them. I suppose I could spend an entire week making a spreadsheet full of mountain elevations, but I don't need to. An order of magnitude estimate should be enough. A quick glance at a map, and we can see mountain peaks vary from a half a mile up to a couple miles. We round that to one mile and convert to metric and scale 159 million to one, we get 10 micrometers. Huh, I mean, that's small, but I expected that to be a lot smaller. Can we feel that? I don't know. Research cologne. Yes. How sensitive is human touch? I don't know. I'll check. Thanks. Whoa. In 2013, a team of Swedish scientists put nanoscale ripples in the surface of smooth materials. Then people ran their dominant index finger over each surface. The team found that participants could detect differences as small as 13 nanometers tall and 760 nanometers wide, which is kind of bonkers. That's a thousand times smaller than our scaled mountains. For perspective, on this scale, we could feel cars and houses. Well, assuming they were pretty isolated and half a mile apart, and you were running your fingertips over them. The paper also states that in the absence of movement, 0.2 millimeters is actually the minimum detectable imperfection, which is larger than the largest surface features on Earth. So I guess the answer is yes, we could feel the mountains as long as we're rubbing them. The Earth's oblateness, exaggerated. The Earth's geoid, exaggerated. If you were holding the Earth in your hand, it would feel like a perfectly smooth ball. 
maybe a little soft and a little wet, but that's it. But if you're rubbing it, the precious, you could at least tell that some parts of it were rougher than others. So, would you want to be like Galactus and hold the earth in your hand? Please share in the comments. That was a really creepy share in the comments. <laughs> I'm gonna do that again. Please share in the comments. Do it now, precious. <laughs> thanks for liking and sharing this video. A special thanks goes out to my Patreon patrons and YouTube members like Ilya Yashin, who has been pledging at the Einsteinium level for over three years. That's a lot of support. Don't forget to subscribe if you'd like to keep up with us. And until next time, remember, it's okay to be a little crazy. Thanks again to KiwiCo for helping support this episode. KiwiCo is a monthly subscription box full of super cool hands-on projects designed to expose kids to concepts in STEM and ships to more than 40 countries. They offer eight subscription lines, each catering to a different age group. The one I'm working on here is the Eureka Crate for ages 14 and older but I'm considering getting the Koala Crate for my niece. Each KiwiCo Crate comes with all the supplies you'd need for that month's project. I only had to grab a pair of scissors to cut open the bags and trim some zip ties. This crate even had extras for some of the more fragile pieces, just in case. The experience was engaging and very low stress. It would be great for a kid or adult that loves hands-on projects. When we teach kids to problem solve, innovate, and create today, who knows what they'll do tomorrow? And hey, look at that, it works. If you're interested, you can get 50% off your first month for any crate by going to kiwico.com slash science asylum, linked below in the description. The featured comment comes from Defenestrated23, who said, Imaginary is the most unfortunate name in mathematics. I agree, real and imaginary are such terrible names. I mean, all numbers are imaginary, am I right? Anyway, thanks for watching.